Poor old Joe just can't catch a break. Just when you thought he couldn't possibly make a bad situation even worse, he committed the biggest blunder a Democrat politician could possibly make. He ignored a black woman and broke her heart in the process <laughs> and gave us a fantastic new meme, which perfectly sums up the Biden campaign. This after his big campaign rally in, I believe, Madison, Wisconsin on Friday, which was supposed to reinvigorate his campaign and rehabilitate his image. And we'll get into his post-rally interview with George Stephanopoulos in a moment. Here she is, you can see, barely able to contain herself, just moments away from the opportunity of a lifetime, coming face to face with the President of the United States. She says hi, and then he didn't even make eye contact with her, devastating her. Moving on to Sniff, the old lady next to her, which is extremely out of character for him because he usually has an age limit of about 11 years old for that kind of thing. And she's hoping for a second chance. And no, he's talking to the woman behind her and still completely ignoring her. She's trying to tap him on the arm. Hey, old Joe, I'm right here. Hello, I'm going to vote for you too. And... The devastation sets back in, and old Joe continues to move on. <laughs> Even taking selfies with the white women while continuing to ignore the black one. Which gave birth to this meme, which perfectly sums up the Biden administration. How it started versus how it's going. And here he is trying to convince himself that he's staying in the race. And his embarrassing debate performance last week was just a fluke. I'm, letting, I'm not letting one 90-minute debate wipe out three and a half years of work. As the governor said, I've led this nation to the depths of pand from the depths of pandemic to the what? strongest economy in the world. As you can see, sadly, he is still unable to finish complete sentences. I mean, what's next? Is he going to forget what year it is? <laughs> oh, wait, what's this? I'll beat Donald Trump. I will beat him again in 2020. He'll beat him again in 2020. And after this rally, he sat down for a face-to-face -face exclusive interview with ABC's George Snuffleupagus to try to prove to the American people that the debate disaster was just a mistake. He just had jet lag and a cold. He is still as sharp as a tack. But then this happened. Did you ever watch the debate afterwards? I don't think I did, no. Well, what, I'm trying, what I want to get at I is... I don't it. think I did. So he's not even sure if he reviewed his own debate performance. That's how far gone this guy is. And just to be clear, this is not a deceptively edited clip. This is not an answer from a different question. Spliced together to make a meme. Joe Biden is the meme. And that was the actual answer to that question. And he just kept digging himself deeper and deeper into the hole that the Democrat Party now finds themselves in. Well, what, I'm trying, what I want to get at is uh, what were you experiencing as you were going through the debate? Did you Notice how nice George was? He didn't say, wait, what do you mean? You don't know if you actually reviewed your debate performance, sir? <laughs> OK, maybe we should call a doctor. I don't think I did, no. Well, what, I'm trying, what I want to get at is uh, what were you experiencing as you were going through the debate? Did you know how badly it was going? Yeah, look, the whole way I prepared, nobody's fault of mine. Nobody's fault of mine. And your wife's for continuing to keep up this charade. I, uh, I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down, as I did come back with foreign leaders or the National Security Council, for explicit detail. And I realized about partway through that you know, all the, I get quoted, the New York Times had me down at 10 points before the debate, nine now or whatever the hell it is. Okay, he still can't even finish a train of thought. I just prepared with too many details. Whatever the hell these polls are saying about me. <laughs> Come on, man. The fact of the matter is that what I looked at is that he also lied 28 times. I couldn't, I mean, the way the debate ran, not my fault, no one else's fault. No one else's fault. But it seemed like you were having trouble from the first question in. Yeah, just like he is in this interview, too. The Democrats are finally starting to realize what a mess they got themselves into because no matter what they do now, if they keep Joe in, if they swap him out for Kamala, if they swap both of them out for Gavin Newsom, they are going to look like complete clowns. And to be fair, Donald Trump is partially responsible for this because 
if he didn't run for re-election again, then Joe Biden would not have run for re-election either. And he would have retired and would have said that his number one goal was just to stop Donald Trump from ever becoming president again. He achieved that goal. And so he's going to retire since his mission is complete. But then when Donald Trump said that he was running again, if old Joe didn't say that he was also running, then he would have looked like a coward because he would have been ducking out of a rematch. And so now they're finally starting to realize what a pickle they've got themselves into because God forbid if old Joe were to win, if he stays in the race, then there's no way that he's going to be able to make it through another four years. They would 25th Amendment him within a year, probably within six months, maybe even by January 21st, one day after he would be re-inaugurated. Elections are about the future, not the past. They're about tomorrow, not yesterday. And the question on so many people's minds right now is, can you serve effectively for the next four years? George, I'm the guy that put NATO together, the future. No one thought I could expand it. I'm the guy that shut Putin down. No one thought it could happen. Uh, you didn't shut Putin down. Putin is actually uh, winning the war over there in Ukraine, sir. There is probably no hope for the Joe Biden re-election campaign after this because every time he opened his mouth during this interview, every time he opens his mouth now in front of any camera, it just continues to get worse and worse. Listen to this. What's your plan to turn the campaign around? You saw it today. How many, how many people do you get and draw crowds like I drew today? How many what? How many, how many people do you get and draw crowds like I drew today? You find me more enthusiastic than today? Huh? I mean, I, I don't think you want to play the crowd game. Donald Trump can draw big crowds. There's no question about that. He can draw a big crowd, but what does he say? Who does he have? I'm the guy supposedly in trouble. <laughs> oh, you're in trouble, all right. Would you like to embarrass yourself and our country even further, old Joe? Would you be willing to undergo an independent medical evaluation that included neurological and cognitive, cognitive tests and release the results to the American people? Look. I have a cognitive test every single day. We know. Every day I have that test. We see it. Everything I do. You know, not only am I campaigning, but I'm running the world. Not, and that's not how it sounds like hyperbole. He's running the world. But we are the essential nation in the world. I don't know if was right. And every single day, for example, today, before I come out here. We saw your campaign rally where you didn't even know what year it was. Let me ask you, because we talked to our reporters, uh, all the networks did after the interview last night, and their word from the campaign in the White House was that they thought the president hit it out of the park in that interview. Do you feel that way? Look, the president had a broad interview. He answered tough questions um, after uh, a debate performance where everybody has been telling him uh, that he should exit the race, and, and he defied expectations. I think that the president showed up. He just gave a speech. He answered every single question. He he didn't even remember whether or not he watched the recording of his debate so that he could see how terrible he was. This is how a real president handled an interview with George Stephanopoulos. Remember this. Going back to, to last June, is there anything you regret? Oh, absolutely. I'd love to have done certain things over, but you can't. You can't. But that's true in life. I'd love to have, have done in life certain things over, I guess. And you would have two. Give me one. You would have loved not to have contributed to the Clinton Foundation, as an example. There are things that you wish you didn't do, okay? You came very close to the edge. You would have loved to have had that decision over again. And now the media is even admitting that the Biden campaign is giving them pre-written questions to ask old Joe when they grant interviews. It's something I listen to both of them, and there's something that's similar here. You each were, uh, you asked four questions, and maybe that's what you were allowed to ask by uh, the campaign or the White House, but they were essentially the same questions, both interviews about accomplishments, progress in your respective state, what's at stake in the election, what he has to say about his debate performance, and what he would say to voters who think uh, their vote doesn't matter or might sit this election out. Were those questions given to you by the White House or did you have or the campaign or did you have to submit questions ahead of this interview? The questions were sent to me for approval. I approved them. OK, so the White House sent the questions to you ahead of the interview. Yes. OK, I, I got several questions, eight yeah. of them. And the four that were chosen were the ones that I approved. Okay, that makes now the second local radio host that admits that they were given questions by the Biden campaign to ask him during their interviews. And something that got lost in the dust-up over old Joe's embarrassing debate performance 
is that Adam Kinzinger, former Republican member of Congress, turned crybaby and January 6th committee member, endorsed old Joe for president the night before the debate. And this is how CNN framed his big announcements. Wait for it. And, and, and I just want to emphasize what you just said. You said you haven't changed. Right. So in other words, the rising star Adam Kinzinger, seen as future Republican presidential candidate, is the same guy. Yeah. Introducing yeah. Joe Biden. Yeah, because the party no longer knows what it believes anymore. Oh, we certainly know what we believe in, sir, and what we're doing. It's obvious that your party, the Democrat Party, has no idea what's going on. Poor old Joe didn't know what was happening over a year ago when the Democrat Party was trying to figure out whether or not they were going to allow him to run for re-election or not. I have not made that formal decision, but it's my intention. My intention to run again. And we have time to make that decision. Uh, Dr. Biden is for it. Mr. President. Oh, Dr. Biden thinks that uh, my wife thinks that. Uh, that I uh, that, that we're that we're that your party is screwed no matter what you do at this point. Hey, today, Sunday, July 7th is the last day to get free shipping on any of my shirts. Markdays.com by using the promo code freedom at the checkout. So order your An Appeal to Heaven shirt, the Teflon Don shirt, a MAGA Mafia shirt, or any of my awesome designs. Now most available in a tank top as well for the summer. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Enter the promo code FREEDOM at the checkout to get free shipping in the U.S. today, Sunday, final day, and check them out. <laughs>